old. So um, there's two ways of doing this. One is direct heat uh, transfer to the storage where I have some of that in the living room behind the French doors uh, on the floor. I have a dark blue tile with two inches of concrete under it and the sun shines on that it warms it up and it's very nice and comfortable to walk on your feet. But that isn't nearly enough thermal mass. So, and because I'm on a ledge, the, th the thing drops off, so I have to do something different. So I have a, um, I have to put the leash on properly here. It doesn't stay very well. Um, I have to, I have a hypo cost. H-Y-P-O-C-A-U-S-T. That's the, the Latin word. That's what the Romans called their heat storage system. Uh, I have a tile floor with chambers underneath, and I can put the uh, warm air through those chambers. Now, the Romans made the chambers quite big because they had a wood-fired furnace in one corner of the building and let all the smoke go through the floor and then up a chimney in the other corner. And they had to have the chambers big enough so that when the soot builds up, they could send the slave children in to clean it. The kids today at uh, the elementary school got a big kick out of that about um, the job they don't have to do. But... Um, I have just concrete blocks laid on their side, and I have the air going in the middle and out the four corners. It's um, the back half of the house, which is on a granite ledge, so I had a good support for it. If you look way up at the top of the roof, where the, the uh, two parts of the roof meet, you'll see a little tiny photovoltaic module up there. That runs the fan, and I put it there uh, so that the shadow of the uh, right-hand roof will fall on the panel in the morning. Now, one of the problems with photovoltaic modules are that, uh, like this one here, um, all the cells are in series. Now, this one actually has three sets of series parallel. That's why you're different. It's, no one builds them like this anymore. That, that panel, by the way, is 31 years old and it's just still in fine shape. All the cells are in perfectly good shape. It got badly cooked by being in the Mojave Desert with reflectors and not enough cooling, so the plastic encapsulant got damaged, and, it, and that's blocking some of the light. So it's down to about uh, 35, or maybe that's about 37 watts from the 40 watts it was originally. But nevertheless, it, 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 they last. So uh, uh, I have it so that the fan won't start until the shadow comes off the last cell. Because you cover one cell, the whole thing shuts off. We were, the kids were playing with this little uh, solar boat and having fun with their hand doing this uh, earlier today. In fact, right here, we had the boat in uh, the pond that's right down there, as a matter of fact. It was fun. So that's... Um, <clears throat> how I put the heat into the hypocost, and then, it and then it heats the floor, and then the heat comes up all night long. So if it's a sunny day, and uh, the, it's still warm in the morning, my bedroom will drop to about um, maybe 65 degrees by morning. And then if it's going to be sunny that morning, I don't even bother lighting a fire. Sometimes I do to burn some trash in the kitchen wood stove, but that's about it. Other aspects of the house. I collect rainwater. I have no well because that's on a granite ledge uh, right next to the ocean. And uh, wells are very expensive, and you're likely to get nothing but brackish water or sulfur water is what they get there. So I... Um, filter and I do the use rainwater for everything including drinking so it's ecologically nice that way and you see that panel that's on the lower roof right above the woman who's painting there that is a hybrid that makes hot water and electricity at the same time I'll show you pictures of that in a moment us building one and uh, that's where I get the hot water for my shower so this is the place in the winter. 
um, when I was down in Nicaragua, uh, my friend sent me that picture to show me what I'm missing. <laughs> yeah, see, I have an, uh, an, another solution. When I'm there all winter, it takes one cord of wood to heat my house as a backup to the solar. But um, what's happened is the Universidad Nacional de Ingeniería, National Engineering University in Managua, insists that I come down from the beginning of January through sometime in March to teach summer school course. So um, they, people say, don't you miss Maine winters? They say, no, they wait for me. And they're still there in March when they come back. Only this year, I didn't know this was going to happen. I ended up um, going to Rwanda and then Nebraska. When I started my trip in November, I didn't know I was going to come here. Uh, this is the interior. You can see the wood stove that I used the cord of wood in. And uh, I made the kitchen counters and everything myself. That stone wall actually is part of the heating system. In the dead of winter, the sun shines in through the windows and actually shines all the way to that wall and helps warm it up. And the air from the fan that goes in the hypocost actually goes through the back of that wall down. That's part of the ductwork. So it warms the wall as well as the, as the floor. You can see the tile floor there. I did it just like the Romans did. I put down these blocks, and then I poured concrete over the whole thing, and then uh, made a mortar mixture and set the tiles right in to the concrete so that they didn't use any glue. I used the regular cement so that I had a very good thermal bond. Um, as you remember, um, concrete was the Romans' favorite building material. So, um, and then you notice I have nice uh, oak countertops. That's because I couldn't afford Formica. This is the bathroom. And um, I just want to show it for a couple of things. First of all, it has no curtains. There's nobody out there that are completely unnecessary. And um, there's, there's a deck out there. Whoops, this came off again. You know, you know, the, the spring isn't very good. Let me see if I can put it a place where, I'll put it this way. Is the sound okay like this? Okay. Um, that way the gravity will hold it. Um, it's about 28 degrees outside. Nice sunny winter day. And yes, there's snow everywhere, snow and ice everywhere. Uh, the bathroom is about 80 inside. I um, like to design passive solar homes so the bathrooms overheat. I like warm bathrooms. And um, uh, it was a bathtub I got that had some chips because I, I really is a very low budget house. Uh, by the way, a passive solar home is cheaper than a conventional home if you know what you're doing. The solar air heaters I have actually were cheaper than the wall they replaced. So uh, you have to know what you're doing. And a lot of people just like to spend the extra money to have a conventional house with a furnace. And then they have, of course, they have to buy fuel for the furnace. Um, so that, anyway, the wood uh, makes a nice, uh, it hides the chip that was there when I got the cheap bathtub. And it also makes a nice place to put the wine glass when you're laying in the hot tub watching the sunset on a winter night. <laughs> and um, you notice where the faucets are? Those are kitchen sink faucets. I've since replaced them for um, uh, French ones because I have a gravity feed water system. It was taking too long to fill the tub with American faucets because I have very low water pressure. Um, that's so that when there's two people in the bathtub, nobody has a faucet in their back. I like to worry about details. I also have a shower, which the shower is right under the tank, the cold and hot water tanks. I use a gravity um, thermal siphon system. The collector is down low.